There are many remarkable, gigantic dogs in the world, but all these mega-breed giant dogs are breeds, hence created by man from a much smaller, naturally existing canine species. The big cats are all of their individual species and created by evolution. They gained their size to be the most successful predators possible in their hunting style to survive. There are no natural canines that fit that description to the same extent that big cats do. The Northwestern Wolf is the biggest, and their size doesn't come close to comparing with lions or tigers. They range between 79 and 159 pounds, or 35 to 72 kilograms, and exceptionally large specimens have measured 175 pounds, or 80 kilograms. There was a very large wild dog, now extinct, called the Episcion. It was native to North America and appears to have existed up until about 5.3 million years ago. The dog weighed between 200 and 300 pounds. It had a massive head and powerful jaws. His skull was lion-like in shape, apparently. It is described as a bone-crushing dog. As this animal is extinct, it no longer competes with the big cats in terms of size and weight nowadays. Most of today's large, land-dwelling carnivores can be divided into two categories, the pack hunters and the solitary ambush predators. It would seem that, for mammals at least, these are the two most efficient survival strategies because several groups have independently evolved to fall squarely into each category. All canines which are macro-predatory subscribe to the former lifestyle. To be specific, that means the gray wolf, the dole, and the African wild dog, the bush dog, and the dingo, as well as its little-known relative, the New Guinea singing dog. They're not the only members of the category, however. Despite being more closely related to felines, hyenas very much exemplify this hunting strategy. The spotted hyena, in particular. All these animals work together in packs to bring down prey much larger than themselves. Because each individual is small in comparison to the quarry, overpowering prey through brute strength is unfeasible. Instead, they must use superior endurance to run victims into the ground. This is reflected in their anatomy. The legs are very slim, and the claws are big and blunt to provide traction during a long-distance pursuit. The wrists are stiff and immobile, preventing any joint stress that might come with repetitive impacts of running. The forelegs also tend to be a little longer than the hind legs. Another factor at play is the fact that, once an animal has been chased to the point of total exhaustion, it's not going anywhere. Thus, pack-hunting carnivores are in no rush to actually kill their prey. They can just start eating and let it die slowly. To capitalize on this macabre advantage, their carnassial teeth are usually huge, adapted for crushing through meat, sinew, and even bone. Extraordinary size would not be an asset for a canine's endurance hunt. During the evolutionary process, there were no larger and larger canines born who would survive better than normal-sized siblings. They reached a certain size, such as in the wolf, which was the sweet spot for calories burned during a hunt and calories consumed. Anything larger was not proving to be an advantage, and since their limbs were not being used as a major weapon, there was no need for their limbs to bulk up in the way that a lion or tiger is. They remain lithe, long-distance runners, whose weapon is their jaws. Now, let's discuss the second hunting strategy, solitary ambush predation. While the textbook examples of the former category are canines, the most obvious exemplars of this are felines. Big cats, to be more specific. That includes tiger, leopard, jaguar, snow leopard, clouded leopard, and cougar. Lions are an interesting case since they live the lifestyle of a pack-hunting predator, but only evolved this behavior very recently. Anatomically, they still have most of the hallmarks of ambush predators. Cheetahs are somewhere in between the two. They have many characteristics typical of pack hunters. Males even hunt in cooperative groups called coalitions, but also a few of their feline relatives, and they tend to use agility as their weapon of choice, rather than stamina. Anyway, there are a handful of other members of the ambush predator classification, such as the polar bear. As said, 
all of these animals lead solitary lives. This has resulted in most of them being much larger than animals that hunt in packs to tackle very large targets. They have to carry muscle mass equivalent to that of several small predators. Rather than running down their prey, they sneak up on it, getting in as close as possible unnoticed before pouncing. Most, but not all, live in forested ecosystems, where the dense vegetation can conceal their approach. Felines, with their method of hunting, did bulk up. A stronger leg attached to those sharp claws could do more damage to their prey, and when they grapple their prey, stronger limbs are an advantage. So, evolution favored the stronger limb muscles, and stronger, bulkier limbs needed stronger, bulkier shoulders, and a larger, heavier body to attach to. So cats kept getting bigger, until they too reached a sweet spot in size. Because of this, felines attack their prey when it is at full strength, so they need extra size and bulk. Canines injure their prey, weakening it. Then, at the appropriate time, they kill. Size isn't needed, so it basically comes down to the claws and the way each animal makes initial contact with its prey. The dentition is also very different from what you would see in a cursorial pack-hunting predator. Rather than the carnassials, it is the fangs that are absurdly enlarged as they are used to deliver that lightning-fast fatal bite. Yes, ironically, felines have bigger canines than canines. This trait is most pronounced in the clouded leopards. Relative to their size, they have the largest canines of any cat, being almost comparable to the saber tooths of old. Dogs use their jaws to take down. They can't snag with their dull round claws, and they don't grapple their prey. In fact, unlike felines who have shoulder anatomy that allows grappling or completely encircling an object with their front limbs, the anatomy of canine shoulder joints is not built that way. Canines can't encircle or grapple with their front limbs. The mechanics of the joints are very much different and is a very basic difference between dog and cat anatomy. Therefore, bigger, stronger arms didn't help dogs. Limbs aren't their initial weapon, and they burn lots of calories in a chase. The snout is also shortened, a feature that maximizes bite force. This tends to compromise the sense of smell, so the sense of hearing is often much more developed. The good hearing also lends itself well to the forest landscape. Cats use their limbs to take down. They snag and slash with their razor-sharp claws. They grapple their prey. Bigger, stronger arms were very helpful. Their limbs are their initial weapon, and they don't burn that many calories. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.